As we reached the close of our series, Cat and Nine Tales, we thought that we'd have a bit of fun with our cat theme. Cork Arts Theatre will, I think, always be fondly called the Cat Club by most of us. Our memory series highlighted the affection we have for the old and the new cat. But we know that as much as we care for it, there are cuddly, crafty, complicated and crazy creatures who also, if you'll excuse the pun, have their own tales to tell. So to finish the poetry series of the Cat and Nine Tales, we've chosen nine poems about cats. Some were chosen for younger listeners, but no doubt will be enjoyed by all. Members of the event team, Lola Pierce, Kieran O'Leary, Joe Fitzgibbon, Tess Healy Maguire, Marion Wyatt, and yours truly, Angela MacDonald, are joined by professional dancer, Alex Glennon, who made her acting debut in Anne Frank and Me back in 2008. And we're delighted to say that Mary D. Healy, former chair of the Cat Club and director of Alley Cats, joins us too. And we're absolutely thrilled that Shane Casey, who made his debut as Huckleberry Finn in Tom Sawyer back in the 90s in the Cat Club, makes the end of our series perfect. So for a short while longer, make yourself comfortable, listen to the music of our own Cat and Nine Tales composer, Jimmy Brocky, maybe invite a certain furry companion to join you as we make a few more whiskers twitch. sleep anywhere, any table, any chair, top of piano, window ledge, in the middle, on the edge, open drawer, empty shoe, anybody's lap will do, fitted in a cardboard box, in the cupboard with your frocks, anywhere, they don't care, cats sleep anywhere. little kittens, one stormy night, began to quarrel and then to fight. One had a mouse and the other had none, and that was the way the quarrel begun. I'll have that mouse, said the bigger cat. I will have that mouse, said the tortoise shell, and spitting and scratching on her sister she fell. I've told you before, it was a stormy night when these two kittens began to fight. The old woman took the sweeping broom and swept them both right out of the room. The ground was covered with frost and snow. They had lost the mouse and had nowhere to go. So they lay and shivered beside the door till the old woman finished sweeping the floor. And then they crept in as quiet as mice, all wet with snow and as cold as ice. They found it much better that stormy night to lie by the fire than to quarrel and fight.
The three little kittens, they lost their mittens and soon began to cry. Oh, mother dear, we sadly fear that we have lost our mittens. What? Lost your mittens, you naughty kittens. Then you shall have no pie. Meow, meow, meow. Then you shall have no pie. The three little kittens, they found their mittens and soon began to cry. Oh, mother dear, see here, see here, for we have found our mittens. Put on your mittens, you silly kittens, and you shall have some pie. Oh, let us have some pie. The three little kittens put on their mittens and soon ate up the pie. Oh, mother dear, we greatly fear that we have soiled our mittens. What? Soiled your mittens, you naughty kittens. And they began to sigh. Meow, <gasps> meow. <gasps> Meow. Then they began to sigh. The three little kittens, they washed their mittens and hung them out to dry. Oh, mother dear, did you not hear that we have washed our mittens? What? Washed your mittens? Then you are good kittens. But I smell a rat close by. Meow, meow, meow. We smell a rat close by. The gingham dog and the calico cat side by side on the table sat. It was half past twelve and what do you think? nor one nor t'other had slept a wink. The old Dutch clock and the Chinese plate appeared to know as sure as fate there was going to be a terrible spat. I wasn't there. I simply state what was told to me by the Chinese plate. The gingham dog went bow, wow, wow, and the calico cat replied meow. The air was littered an hour or so with bits of gingham and calico, while the old Dutch clock in the chimney place, up with its hands before its face, for it always dreaded a family row. Now mind, I'm only telling you what the old Dutch clock declares is true. The Chinese plate looked very blue and wailed, oh, Dear, what shall we do? But the gingham dog and the calico cat wallowed this way and tumbled that, employing every tooth and claw in the awfulest way you ever saw. And oh, how the gingham and calico flew. Don't fancy I exaggerate. I got my news from the Chinese plate. Next morning, where the two had sat, they found no trace of dog or cat. And some folks think unto this day that burglars stole that pair away. But the truth about the cat and pup is this. They ate each other up. Now what do you really think of that? The old Dutch clock, it told me. And that is how I came to know. The cat went here and there, and the moon spun round like a top. And the nearest kin of the moon, the creeping cat, looked up. 
Black Minilouche stared at the moon for wonder and wail as he would. The pure cold light in the sky troubled his animal blood. Minilouche runs in the grass, lifting his delicate feet. Do you dance, Minilouche? Do you dance? When two close kindred meet, what better than call a dance? Maybe the moon may learn, tired of that courtly fashion, a new dance turn. Minilouche creeps through the grass, from moonlit place to place. The sacred moon overhead has taken a new phase. Does Minilouche know that his pupils will pass from change to change, and that from round to crescent, from crescent to round they range? Minilouche creeps through the grass, alone, important and wise, and lifts to the changing moon his changing eyes. T'was on a lofty vase's side where China's gayest art had dyed the azure flowers that blow. Demurest of the tabby kind, the pensive Selima reclined, gazed on the lake below. Her conscious tale, her joy declared, the fair round face, the snowy beard, the velvet of her paws, her coat that with the tortoise vies, her ears of jet and emerald eyes, she saw and purred applause. Still had she gazed, but midst the tide, two angel forms were seen to glide, the genie of the stream. Their scaly armour's Tyrian hue, through richest purple to the view, betrayed a golden gleam. The hapless nymph with wonder saw, a whisker first and then a claw, with many an ardent wish she stretched in vain to reach the prize. What female heart can gold despise? What cats averse to fish? Presumptuous maid, with looks intent Again she stretched, again she bent, nor knew the gulf between. Malignant fate sat by and smiled. The slippery verge her feet beguiled. She tumbled headlong in. Eight times emerging from the flood, she mewed to every watery god some speedy aid to send. No dolphin came, no Nereid stirred, nor cruel Tom, nor Susan heard. A favourite has no friend. From hence, ye beauties undeceived, no one false step is ne'er retrieved, and be with caution bold. Not all that tempts your wandering eyes and heedless hearts is lawful prize, nor all that glisters gold. Cat, who hast passed thy grand climacteric, how many mice and rats hast in thy days destroyed? How many titbits stolen? Gaze with those bright languid segments green, and prick those velvet ears. But prithee, do not stick thy latent talons in me, and upraise thy gentle mew, and tell me all thy phrase of fish and mice and rats and tender chick. Nay, look not down, 
nor lick thy dainty wrists. For all the wheezy asthma, and for all thy tail's tip is nicked off. And, though the fists of many of maid have given thee many a maul, still is that fire as soft as when the lists in youth thou enteredest on glass-bottled wall. A little cat played on a silver flute, and a big cat sat and listened. The little cat's strains gave the big cat pains, and a tear on his eyelid glistened. Then the big cat said, Oh, rest a while. But the little cat said, No, no, for I get pay for the tunes I play. And the big cat answered, Oh, if you get pay for the tunes you play, I'm afraid you'll play till you drop. You'll spoil your health in this race for wealth, so I'll give you more to stop. Said the little cat, hush, you make me blush. Your offer is unusually kind though it's very, very hard to leave the backyard. I'll accept if you don't mind. So the big cat gave him a thousand pounds and a silver brush and a comb and a country seat on Beacon Street right under the State House dome. And the little cat sits with other little kits and watches the bright sun rise. And the voice of the flute is long since mute and the big cat dries his eyes. Love to eat them mouses. Mouses what I love to eat. Bite their little heads off. Nibble on their tiny feet. Love to eat them mouses. Mouses what I love to eat. Bite their little heads off. Nibble on their tiny feet. <laughs>